grow their network and find a mentor or a coach who Mm. can really help guide you. Um, There's no way I would be where I am today had I not not worked super hard to find people that had the type of lifestyle, that had the type of businesses that I Mm. wanted. And, and I hunted them down and I pursued them and I worked hard to build really great relationships with, with a handful of really successful entrepreneurs. And that's made all the difference for me in terms of opportunities that have opened up, um, having them give me advice, help, help, you know, giving them space to call me out on my blind spots and on areas that I need to work in. Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Journey. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that has built several businesses in the seven and eight figure companies, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where we help startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. And if you ever need help with a patent and trademark, just go to strategymeeting.com and grab some time with us. Now, today we have another great uh, guest on the episode and Shannon Bowling um, and Shanna or Shannon, I want to say, I was going to say Shada, then I, I got Shada, um, came, um, in her own words, came from a bit of a dysfunctional family, um, was, uh, but also got, or with that upbringing, got into coaching, uh, I think coaching uh, surfed w- or surfing with friends, if I remember, something with surfing, and she'll get into it, but I have uh, something with coaching and surfing, and uh, she uh, never wanted, to, or never saw her working a, a corporate job, so just uh, never, also never saw herself getting married, and then uh, got into, do, I think, some acting when she was around 10 years old and uh, got into call or got into college pursued acting and theater and I think it was communications for a period of time and started working on online business and did that for a period of time and also met a fiance so never thought she'd get married saw herself get married but did get uh, get married and uh, scaled her business moved uh, moved over to coaching and then uh, became more active on LinkedIn and now she's married with her husband and they're uh, working to manage business grow or get a house get kids and all the all the fun things as, as we do so with that as much as I may have uh, messed up on the surfing which I'm still not positive if I got right but welcome to the podcast Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that was so fun to just kind of sum up the last decade for me. <laughs> um, and I actually have never surfed before, but yeah, I'm somehow sure- in my notes, I had surfing in there and I'm like, <laughs> I don't remember a surfing, but I have it in there. So some reason I, apparently I thought of surfing when I thought of you. Yeah. Alternate universe or something, or maybe this means <laughs> I need to get into it. Um. That's right. <laughs> maybe, maybe that will be your next career. You'll be a professional oh, yeah. surfer. You never know. You honestly never know. I would never have expected to be where I am today if you had asked me a decade ago. So So maybe with that as an introduction, let's jump into it. So we kind of talked a little bit about your family, about growing up, about, you know, acting and different things, but maybe kind of walk us through a bit of your journey. Certainly. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on today. And hopefully I can just make an impact and help inspire um, some of the next wave of people who want to start their first business or get into the startup space. Um, So as you surmised uh, so well, (laughs) so fun, Um, I had came from kind of a dysfunctional family. I ended up moving out when I was 16, Um, Mm. really had no stability, didn't have much of a foundation. Um, And because of that, didn't think I'd live a quote unquote normal life of getting Mm. married and having a traditional job. I just didn't want to perpetuate the dysfunction that I experienced Hmm. So as a lot of artists, I think, um, come from, I figured I would use that dysfunction and channel it into something productive in the arts. And so I really, really loved um, breaking apart the psyche of a character and bringing it to life and Hmm. moving an audience. Um, And I thought that's what I was supposed to do. I thought that's how I was supposed to use some of the the challenges that I experienced for the greater good. But Hmm. uh, when I was in college and did a lot of networking with very successful actors and other artists, just just actually really realized I wanted more out of life. <laughs> I never thought I'd get married. I never thought I wanted the average life, but I, I really wanted more of a holistic type of success. Um, mm. But with that said, um, because I had just so many um, constant challenges and, and, fluctua- and fluctuations growing up, Um, didn't see myself in the corporate space. So through Hmm. process of elimination, realized being an entrepreneur would probably be the best route for me if I could make that work where I could build 
businesses um, successfully enough where I could manage my schedule and have some flexibility, not be stuck in a corporate space for the long haul. And so um, maybe one question on that. So you, you decided, hey, I, I don't see myself being a corporate person. It's not, it doesn't fit my personality isn't for me. And I certainly get that. It took me a little bit longer to realize that, but I, I certainly arrived at a similar conclusion. But when you decided, when you made, kind of realized that about yourself or kind of figured out that's not what I want to do, did you, when you started out entrepreneur, did you still try and do the acting? Did you, or, you know, did you try and mesh those together or did you get to the end of, you know, college and say, hey, acting's not for me. I, I you know, it wasn't work or how did that kind of interplay with the acting kind of that desire versus the entrepreneur desire? Yeah, well, it was actually through my first year of college. I just feel like I hit a really big rock bottom um, mm. where I had gone through so much trauma and I was kind of making some bad decisions with the environments that I was in. I was partying a lot. I was in some unhealthy relationships mm. and and acting just perpetuated a lot of that for me because I was constantly using bad memories in the past to be able to bring emotions on the stage. And so I just realized if I continue down that path, I would also be an unhealthy person in so many other areas of my life. So I was just at a really weird crossroads of mm. what do I do? Because I thought I was going to go down this path. I've invested a decade into this area. Um, and so I just did a lot of soul searching, a lot of praying. And actually a friend of mine gave me a book by Tony Robbins called um, Unleash the Giant Within. And it mm. had some really big paradigm shifts. It was actually the first PMA positive mental um, attitude book I ever read. And, and he just shared something that contradicted conventional wisdom, which was what most people do to live a quote unquote good life is they find something that they love and, and they, they do it as a career, but then they don't really think about the ramifications of how that career path will affect their lifestyle. He said what people who, who really live exceptional, extraordinary lives do is they figure out what they want their life to look like. And then they work backwards and they find the right mm. vehicle. They find the right strategies. Mm. So hearing that thought process is what made me open-minded to consider anything outside of the traditional corporate space or the art scene. No one in my life ever said, hey, you would make a fantastic entrepreneur. <laughs> it was, and so I never ever thought I would go that route. So I was mm. so open after that book. And I remember I was just like praying. I'm like, there has to be something. There's gotta be more in life. And so I did a ton of in-person networking. And that's where I started to meet entrepreneurs and the way they lived, the way they spoke, their passion for life clicked and like, okay, these are the kind of people who live the way I want to live. Now I just got to figure out what kind of business I can do that is realistic as a college student. So that was how I went from, you know, going to theater, realizing that was an unhealthy spot career path for me to go in and to reading a book that helped open my mind up to their opportunities. And then I did a lot of networking. Mm -hmm. When I started um, exploring entrepreneurship, I was looking for things that I could do that wouldn't come at a lot of risk that could be fairly flexible just since I had very limited capital <laughs> as an 18 year old kid. Mm. And a lot of people advised me to start in the e-commerce space and do a lot of different things online because that wouldn't require the same level of overhead or capital. Now, one Sorry to dive in. So you said sure. 18. So now we had, cause you went to college and I, I maybe you didn't finish or you did. I don't, I didn't, don't remember that we talked about it, but you did theater and communications. I assume you, I think you said you got a degree in that, right? I did. Yes. So did you, but then you said 18, which is, you know, you wanted to kind of, so did you kind of start the online businesses as you were doing your degree? Exactly. Yeah. So I okay. was, um, so I, I went to school for theater for that freshman year, mm. ended up switching my major to communications oh, okay. um, because I, I just didn't have any security or anything I could fall back on. Mm. I felt like I needed to graduate just to make sure if my businesses didn't work, I at least could fall back on a degree. So I was going to school full time. I was taking 21 credits. I was working 50 hours a week. I, I had three or four jobs at a given time to pay the bills. And then I was also learning how to run a couple businesses. <laughs> hmm. And um, and and my sophomore year of college really realized I had to get honest about where I was investing my time. So unfortunately, I just realized theater wasn't going to be an option for me. Mm -hmm. I was also, I'd founded two student orgs. I was running cross country. So I had to really clear my schedule to focus on the most important things. Mm -hmm. So those next three years were pretty wild. <laughs> Not a lot of sleep, 
Um, but mm -hmm. I think really helped propel me forward in the future because I was willing to make some of those, those decisions of delayed gratification early on. Hmm. No. And I, and I think that makes complete sense. And, you know, I think that I, 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 if, you know, my perspective and Devin or Devin's ba or advice or what it's worth is I always think is, is beneficial for people, whatever you're going to do in business, whether it's, you know, even if you were an actor, if you're in communications, you're doing your own startup, working for others is to get some of that real world or practical experience while you're in college, as opposed to waiting to graduate and then doing it, because you're never going to, you're going to have to get it one way or the other. And if you do it while you're in college, you can then start to see how the things you're learning in school match up with that. So I think it's cool that as you were going through switching majors, getting into communications, you're also saying, how can I start to kind of develop that with a startup or a business, you know, within the poor college students type of funding, but still not letting that be a, you know, something that holds you back. Certainly. I think it all comes down to your mindset of just being solution oriented. And I think if you're someone who's outcome focused, you can figure out how to make anything work. Um, mm. I didn't think, I, and, and gradually my capacity grew over time where I could handle that type of workload. Um, mm. It didn't happen overnight. So, you know, I, I had grace with myself. I was okay that maybe I couldn't do as much as I wanted initially with balancing everything over time. I could, I could grow my threshold and my capacity, mm. but I realized even though I was young, I was never getting younger and I had so much catch up to do in life <laughs> um, mm. that I it would take me a couple additional years of getting those skill sets just to, you know, get to where most people were at because of a lot of the poor mindset that I had coming into college. So mm. I think, um, a lot of people say they don't have enough time to start a business or capital or resources. And I just say, that's because that's what you're deciding. <laughs> if you're solution oriented and creative, there's people who've overcome really crazy situations and, and you can too, you, as long as you're willing to, to lean in and be uh, flexible. No, and I think, I think that's, I absolutely agree with that. So now once you, so you graduated, if I remember now, you graduated from college and you went, you kind of continued to do the e-commerce kind of side hustle, but then you also went and kind of did work that traditional finance job for a period of time. Is that right? Yep. So I always liked more moderate approach to entrepreneurship. I wanted to scale my businesses, but sometimes I see people start a business and then mm -hmm. maybe they have a lot of revenue or fast growth, but Fast growth kind of scares me sometimes because it doesn't always mean it's really rooted in something that's stable for the long term or the foundation isn't in place. Mm. Um, so I personally believe if you have the ability um, and if you're dependent on your business supporting your finances, take a more moderate approach unless you have family and business who can really guide you. Mm. So I believed I'm going to work for five years or so in the corporate space mm. so that there's no pressure on my businesses to prematurely perform at a certain rate also gave me the ability to make smarter business decisions, um, get better at automating and scaling a lot of my processes. And I use that those, you know, five or six years in the corporate space to grow my skill sets, clear my debt. My husband and I both went to private colleges. We were not advised mm -hmm. wisely <laughs> to maybe consider some cheaper uh, higher ed um, expenses. So we had six figures of debt coming out of college. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we used my corporate salary to, to pay that off um, and, and uh, use our business income to just help boost our savings and, and give me more options down the road. So mm -hmm. for me, it served me very well to have that corporate experience. And I worked as a banker, which I think also served well in, in business. Um, if you are going to have a nine to five outside of your businesses, choose a business or a career or um, an industry that might help support your mm. business. Maybe it's the learning about finance, maybe it's going the accounting route, but I think you can be somewhat strategic with your corporate career to, to support some skill set development in your businesses. No, and I think that completely makes sense. And I, you know, now one question I was going to almost kind of following up to that is, so you did that financing for kind of five, you know, working in the fight, you know, typical job or a finance job for about five years. But then if I remember kind of in our conversation, you said, you know, kind of jumped over full time to what was your business and kind of made that leap. And it was that kind of, did you take that as, Hey, it's financially secure enough. I'm making enough of an income that it makes sense. Or was it finally just, I've had enough of the finance job and I just want to jump over or is, Hey, you know, other motivations or how did you kind of, you know, kind of in that context, make the the switch from doing it as a side hustle to doing it more as a full-time? 
Yeah, there's a lot that goes into that. So I just like to think of, I always like to kind of zoom out and think about what are, what's my ultimate goal? What's my ultimate focuses in life? And that allows me just to make more logical decisions. We all like to think we're logical decision makers, but we tend to be very emotional decision makers. And so really rooting myself and, and how all of my decisions will help support me get to my long-term goals has helped me make less emotional decisions. I would have quit my job mm. so many years sooner if I, if I let my emotions mm. make my decisions for me. So when, when we were consciously trying to determine um, for me to step out of my corporate career, we were looking at kind of the full picture first is just our initial finances. Uh, we wanted to be debt free. We wanted to have plenty of cash reserves where there was no stress on um, our home team financial situation. I didn't want my husband to have any pressure on his corporate career. He, he has a very great job, makes very good income. Um, but I didn't want there to be any pressure on him with his job so I could run my businesses. And I, I wanted to almost act as if our businesses mm -hmm. couldn't perform and we were just dependent on my husband's salary and our savings that we would be fine. So um, kind of our philosophy is we didn't want me to leave my job until we had essentially a full life year's worth of living mm -hmm. expenses and savings that we could more easily um, get into. We wanted him to have a very secure job. And then also for my businesses to be performing where it's uh, plenty more than my corporate salary <laughs> mm. so that there's some opportunity cost that worked in my favor of not working because I, I could at that point manage doing all of those things, just the nature of the ways that I built my businesses. Mm. Um, and the other element is I started to do more coaching. Um, so that's that what I was going to say, because you, you moved over, you did your business, you, you did make, you know, you had enough of that savings, you decided to jump over. But then it sounds like as you got to e-commerce, you also moved into coaching. So how did you kind of, what caused that transition? Or how did you get into coaching? And do you run, kind of run them side by side and in parallel? Or how did you kind of manage all of that? I do. Yeah, it, it's just so cool to see how things um, kind of work out. Because I don't know if I would have believed I would have been capable to have been a coach <laughs> several years ago. But there were some people in my life that got to know me that just started to ask for coaching or ask for guidance because especially in this economy and um, just how unstable the job world, the job market is more and more people are looking to start something of their own just to secure their finances, much less actually just because they want to be a business owner. So coaching came as kind of a byproduct of people asking me for my advice. I'm like, oh, I guess I could monetize this. Um, another thing that helped kind of create the storm uh, where it made sense for me to start a coaching business mm. wasn't just that interest, but also I had started to do um, some networking on LinkedIn. So I hadn't, a lot of business owners today are realizing LinkedIn is such a hot space to be on and mm. build a brand around. And I had just uh, created a profile on LinkedIn about three years ago just because I felt like I should have one and slowly started to create some content, build a brand, build a network. And from that, it started to explode. And now I've just met so many people through it where even more people have started to reach out to ask for coaching as kind of a byproduct of the content that I share. So a lot of it just kind of came as, as a result of, I think, some of the results that I've had in life. And I found it's just the most rewarding thing I can do is just pay forward mindsets and thought processes and skills, especially since I've had so many amazing mentors and coaches in my life, uh, people that I've networked with over the years. So now I manage them kind of side by side. And my goal is um, we, we plan to start a family by house, do the whole shebang <laughs> in a couple mm -hmm. years um, is for me to, to do all those things while we start a family fairly flexibly so that mm -hmm. um, I can be home with my kids, which was my my big dream when I started my businesses was I wanted to be able to give my kids the life that I kind of wanted and I want to give them really great opportunities. No, and I think that, you know, I, I think that it is great how you've kind of set up your business in the one sense it provides you some of that freedom to not, you know, as opposed to a normal corporate job, you can kind of manage and do the things the way you want to. And then also as your as your situation evolves as you look at a family having kids you know going or getting your house and all those things it gives you that flexibility which is i think a lot of times what drives a lot of entrepreneurs and people to do that is hey one i want to captain my own ship and two i want to have the flexibility to do it the way i want to do it so i think that it sounds like throughout your journey is taken to a good place so you can accomplish a lot of those goals thanks and 
and it, it looks pretty now, but I can assure you it wasn't always pretty <laughs> along the way, especially the first couple of years of just unlearning so many bad employee mindsets and having to relearn mm. so many entrepreneurial type thought processes. Well, and that probably takes us to where I always ask two questions at the end. So that sets it up perfectly. So maybe we'll jump to those now, which is my first question I always ask is, you know, within your journey, what was your worst business decision and what did you learn from it? Yeah, I think my worst business decision in hindsight, obviously hindsight's always 2020, mm. is I wish I would have done more to create a brand online. I think so many entrepreneurs today relate to that. So I wish I would have done more to, to build that network, to create content. Um, I mean, I've done so much the last couple of years I'm very proud of and excited about, but I wish I would have done more because I'm sure it could have just ex escalated things that much quicker. So if people aren't building a brand online, building a network, I would highly recommend that's what's needed to be competitive in, in the business world in the 21st century. All right. No, I think that that's uh, something good to learn from. And always, as you mentioned, hindsight's always twenty twenty. but it also provides a good perspective of, hey, we can learn as we look back and reflect, we can not just have made those mistakes, but figure out how to make or become better from them. So now we'll jump to the second question, which is if you're talking, you know, you're talking to somebody that's just getting into a startup or small business, what would be the one piece of advice you'd give them? I recommend for them to grow their network and find a mentor or a coach who hmm. can really help guide you. Um, there's no way I would be where I am today had I not, not worked super hard to find people that had the type of lifestyle, that had the type of businesses that I hmm. wanted. And, and I hunted them down and I pursued them and I worked hard to build really great relationships with, with a handful of really successful entrepreneurs. And that's made all the difference for me in terms of opportunities that have opened up, um, having them give me advice, help, help, you know, giving them space to call me out on my blind spots and mm -hmm. on areas that I need to work in. So if you are looking to start a business, I would say, find someone who can help you, who can be a coach and an advocate. You'll save yourself tremendous time, heartache and resources. No, and I think that's a great advice. I mean, and mentors can come for in a lot of shapes and forms, right? Sometimes, you know, sometimes I think people always look at mentors as it has to be a close friend or somebody that I know. Sometimes it's somebody, even sometimes I've found I have mentors that, you know, are close to individuals that I, you know, have a good relationship with. I also look sometimes from afar of, hey, you know, as an example, I like Dave Ramsey and he, you know, works on the finance stuff, um, but he, he provides a mentorship, not from the sense I've ever chatted with him or known him, but more from the sense I can look at him and say, how's he do business? Business, how has he been successful? How can I emulate that or learn from what he's doing? And so I think even as you're looking at mentors, it doesn't always have to be someone that you sit now. Some it's great to have those that you can sit down with face to face, chat, you know, run the ideas past. And I think that you can look and say there are multiple different mentors and try and soak in that knowledge from different individuals, however, what however that might be. Absolutely. And I think in addition to that, a lot of times people go to their friends or their family or those closest to them for advice. And I actually think that's one of the biggest mistakes people just make in general mm. is they care about you, they love you, they genuinely wanna help you, but if they don't actually have the results or the expertise, they might not be the best person or people to get your advice from. So like you said, go to the experts, whether it's having that one-on-one -on -one relationship with mentors and coaches or you know, getting uh, advice from books. Kayla and I, my husband, Kayla and I are huge uh, uh, fans of Dave Rams. We actually just finished a couple books of his the last couple months. Um, so we've, we've taken so much advice from people like him. So a lot of resources with books, a lot of resources with people you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching from, but be mindful of good intended people who want to, you know, give you advice. Advice is free. Opinions are free. Um, yep. Great. Doesn't mean it always makes sense to take it. Yeah. And so just out of curiosity, have you ever read Entree Leadership, which is one of uh, Dave Ramsey's books? No, I haven't read that. So I'll have to put that on my list. You'll have, you have to put that on your That's one of my favorite books. So just because you mentioned it, it's kind of the the mixture between entrepreneurship and leadership. So it's just been, it's one book that I enjoy of his. Um, but I liked also what you said, because I think family is oftentimes either, you can have two different possible negatives on family. One is that they'll never want to hurt your feelings. So they'll never tell you the truth. Or they'll tell you the truth so much that they, because they're your family, that you know it'll dash any dreams that you have, even if it could have been a good idea or a good possibility, because they're too brutally honest. So to either kind of get one extreme or the other, but I think about finding that balance is, is the, the good spot to be. 
Well, as we wrap up, as people are wanting to reach out to you, they're wanting to use your coaching service, they're wanting to find out more about your e-commerce platform, they're wanting to, you know, be a customer or client, your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to connect up with you? Of course. Well, I'm always down to, to meet my new best friend <laughs> and, and obviously help people. Best way for people to reach me is on LinkedIn. And they can All find right. me at Shannon Bowling. All right. Well, I definitely re- encourage people to reach out to on LinkedIn and uh, make sure to uh, connect up and uh, get or utilize some of the knowledge that you've accumulated. So. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you listeners, um, if you have your own journey to tell, feel free to reach out to us at inventivejourneyguest.com and apply to be on the podcast. If you're a listener, make sure to click subscribe so you get notifications as all of our awesome episodes come out. And last but not least, if you ever need help with patents or trademarks, feel free to reach out to us at Miller IP Law by going to strategymeeting.com and grabbing some time to chat with us. Thank you again, Shannon. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun and uh, good luck with the next leg of your journey. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine and appreciate the chance to share. Take care. Take care. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode of The Inventive Journey, make sure to go and check out Startups Magazine. They're an awesome uh, magazine and podcast centered over in the UK. And if the magazine is a digital and print magazine where they focus on um, tech startups and entrepreneurs, and they also have a focus on uh, female founders and women in tech. So if you want to check out their magazine, either digital or print, it's uh, Startups Magazine, Startups with an S, magazine.co.uk. And you can also look at their podcast, which is called The Serial entrepreneur so go check them out they're awesome and definitely if you like this episode you'll like them 